Good morning, everyone. I want to invite you guys. Let's stand. I'm going to pray for us before we sing. Jesus, we thank you that your eyes are on us. Heavenly Father, we thank you that your heart is towards us. Lord, would you inhabit the praises of your people this morning? In Jesus' name, amen. He's coming on the clouds, kings and kingdoms will bow down. Oh, and every chain will break, his broken hearts declare his praise. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He is roaring. to save is here to set the captives free but who can stop the Lord Almighty our God is the lion the lion of Judah he is roaring with power and fighting our battles and every knee will bow before him our God is the lamb slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Every knee will bow before him. So who can stop stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Sing 
God, I look, and God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. And God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom, because you know just what to do. that again is our prayer. And God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. And God, I look to you. Where my help comes from. Give me wisdom. Cause you know just what to do. I will joy to be in the house of the Lord with you. A few things I want to bring to your attention. One, you should have received one of these when you came in, and this has a perforated edge. You can tear it off, and on the front, record your name. We want to know that you're here worshiping with us. And on the back side, it also has prayer requests, so let us know as a pastoral staff how we can lift you up in your walk with the Lord. Now, this bulletin that you received, it's a little bit thicker, you might have noticed, and that's because this weekend, we welcomed new members into our community here at Bethany, and there's some bios about them, and it's a joy to see the community of Bethany grow and, and new members become members here. Um, so that's this weekend, and then next weekend, we have some things that I want to make you aware of. One is that there isn't going to be a Saturday night service. There isn't going to be an 8.30 or even a 10.45 service next weekend. Next weekend is Reformation Weekend, and so we're going to have one service on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock in the morning, and we invite you to come and wear your red, the color of the Reformation, and after that service, we're going to have a luncheon downstairs in the gym, 
and you can sign up on our website. You can click the little Luther's Rose on the top of our webpage, and you can RSVP, let us know that you're going to be at this luncheon. And you can also sign up to bring a nice German dish. And maybe if you're like me and you don't know how to cook, you're not very good at cooking, have no fear. There's recipes on the website. So you can follow the recipe exactly, and you don't have to make it up as you go. And you can just follow that and, and bring a meal, bring a side dish for the luncheon next weekend. Also, next weekend, if you're really bummed, you're like, man, I really want to come to Bethany on a Saturday, and I'm bummed there's no Saturday night service. Well, you can come Saturday uh, next weekend to our school auction and, and come support our school. There's going to be a fiesta. I believe there's going to be food there, and there's also going to be Chiefs gear up for auction. I, I heard there's a signed Chiefs helmet the, the year that we won the Super Bowl, which is pretty cool. I think there's Chiefs seats as well up for auction. So come, support our school on October 30th. I think it's at 5.30. Is that right, Lynn? 5.30? 5.30 in our gym as well. So a lot, a lot of things happening at Bethany next weekend. So we begin our worship, so I invite you to rise as we begin our service together. Begin our worship this morning in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go to our Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, oftentimes in our lives, we live in a self-centered way. We do anything that we can to try to get the things that we think that we want. And in the process of chasing after our wants, we fail to love you with our whole heart. We fail to love other people as ourselves. Dear Lord, we come to you today as people in need of your grace and your mercy. We need Jesus. We pray that you forgive us and wash us clean from our sins. And we ask this in your son's holy name. Amen. Well, the good news is for you, Bethany, that God loved you so much that he sent his one and only son, Jesus. And Jesus came and he bore your sins. He, he bore your mistakes and he went to the cross, but he didn't stay there. Three days later, he rose from the grave, giving you life in his name, life that never ends. And upon this confession, I, by virtue of my office as a calm, ordained servant of the word, a servant of Jesus, I now forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And also with you. You may be seated as we hear from God's word. Our first reading today comes from Hebrews chapter 7. Now there have been many of those priests since death prevented them from continuing in office, but... Because Jesus lives forever, he has a permanent priesthood. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him. Because he always lives to intercede for them. Such a high priest meets our need. One who is holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people. He sacrificed for their sins once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests men who are weak, but the oath which came after the law appointed the Son, who has been made perfect forever. This is God's word. We now rise as we join our band and sing to praises to our Lord. We're going to sing the song, Our Father. And as you guys know, this is mostly the, the Lord's Prayer. And I want to encourage you guys, uh, just with a perspective on this song as we sing, um, I, my oldest son is four years old and um, so I'm a relatively new father and as I was uh, first beginning to watch him walk and start to interact with us in like a, in a deeper way the first things that he utters out 
is, is data, of course, you know, we all hear data. And in Hebrew, the words for, for, for God are, are Abba, you know, the, and that's the word for father, and Ima is the word for mother. And so these are the first words that a child would utter out as well. Um, and so in my, my, I realized that my son is reaching up to me and he, he says, Dad, 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 pick me up. You know, that's the, one of the main things that your kid learns to do is, hey, can you pick me up now? You know, I really want to be held right now. And so, but it really struck me. Um, I remember the first times him doing that, reaching up to me, asking, will you hold me? It made me think, man, this is part of what you know, Jesus was talking about when he was teaching his disciples to pray. The same, it's the same relationship that we have with the Father in heaven that we can reach our hands up, give him praise and long for him and call him Father. And so that's just one perspective of many that you can have as we sing and as we pray the prayer that Jesus gave you.
gospel. Mark the 10th chapter, reading from the 46th verse. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Well, many rebuked him, told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and he said, Call him. So they called to the blind man, Cheer up! On your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. And the blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see Go, Jesus said. Your faith has healed you. Immediately, he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. And this is the gospel of the Lord. We pray. Father, may the words of my mouth and may the meditation of each of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock and redeemer. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. The epistle lesson that we read this morning and had that part of a sentence underlined, talks about the one who meets needs. For the title of the sermon is a ministry of meeting needs. We all have them. Some of them real, some of them perceived, some of them we're aware of, some of them maybe not at all. Some needs are critical. Some needs are basic, and some are special. Bartimaeus believed he had a need. And when asked, what do you want? He says, I want to see. Was it a need? Or was it a want? Something that was not a need at all. In the list of things you see on the screen, are some things that are wants, some things that are needs, and some things that present as needs, but they're not. Food, water, toys, candy, blankets, bikes, shelter, television, desserts, clothes, phone, and the one that so many today push off the palate of things needed, Jesus. I would guess that there are a lot of things that are truly wants that masquerade in our life as needs, not least of which is Wi-Fi today. What in your life are your needs? Now, the pyramid you see is rather basic. So what sort of things are you in need of physically in your life? Emotionally? Mentally? What are your needs? Can you identify them? And what do you need relationally in your life? And can you differentiate between those things that you really, really, really want and those things that truly are needs? I believe that we spend a great deal of time and a tremendous amount of effort and resources pursuing things that are wants and in the process neglecting things that are truly needs. This last week at the 830 service, an elderly lady, not a member of the congregation, was wandering around in the parking lot putting letters on everybody's windshields or in their doors. Did anybody get one of those? Okay. They didn't realize that we also parked up here on the side, so those of us that parked on the side didn't get them. But Lori, my wife, got one and immediately texted me and said, do you know this is happening? Well, I'd already heard about it in Bible class, but hadn't had a chance to read it. So I had a chance to read it this week, and it's a loose assortment of Christian 
thoughts, not really coherent, I suppose. But the lady that is identified as having written it, uh, I looked up, she died four months ago. So surely it was not her putting these on the windshields. But as I received reports of these letters being distributed without any permission here in the congregation, I also had someone come up to me and I said, you know, I didn't get a letter, but I saw a dollar lying in the parking lot. And he said, I stopped and I looked down and I reached toward the dollar and picked it up to see if there was anything valuable under it and I didn't see anything, so I just put it back down. Let you just let that soak in just a bit. Wants and needs so much is a chasing after the wind, Ecclesiastes says. Not really needs at all, just wants, masquerading as being significant and important in our life. I believe, however, that our mortality has a way of redefining what our true needs are in life. And sometimes it takes a brush with death to reprioritize and clarify wants from needs. Everybody wants the best pastor you can possibly find for your congregation. And according to Hebrews chapter 7, they come and go. And I would imagine most people here have known more than one pastor in your years of being a parishioner, either here or at another congregation. In fact, I had one lady after service, she said, you know, that challenged me to think. And she said, I think I've had 21 different pastors. Some of them calls received and then the pastor left. Some of them uh, died in office. And death has a way of disconnecting that pastor from his ministry. We come and we go. And yet I believe we put so much trust, spiritual trust, in things that are not permanent. According to the Psalms, princes. Or according to Hebrews, pastors and clergy, politics, and people like ourselves. I believe that there is only one pastorate that's permanent, only one who's seated at the right hand of the Father, who lives and reigns eternally. I believe that Jesus is that one permanent priest who intercedes on our behalf. I believe that only Jesus can completely save those who come to God through him. And I believe that Jesus is there at the right hand of the Father, interceding on our behalf. He's speaking a kind word for us before the Father. I believe Jesus offers that permanency and that priesthood that is forever. And because of that, I believe I need Jesus. I believe you need Jesus. I believe that we need Jesus. I believe the community around us, whether they realize it or not, needs Jesus. Can I get an amen on that one? Amen. Whether you're aware of it or not, uh, Maslow, in his understanding of needs, has impacted each and every one of us at some level in being able to identify what we believe our needs are. For Maslow, the base need that every one of us has is to breathe. We need to breathe. We need food. We need water. We need sleep. We need intimacy. And once those needs are met, then the second set of needs are security, employment, and resources. We need family. We need health. We need property. We need things. But up from that is love and belonging. We need friendships. We need relationships. We need intimacy. 
When those things are achieved, then it's self-esteem, it's confidence, it's the ability to achieve and succeed, it's respect from others that we need. And when we're putting that all together at the top of the pyramid, morality, creativity, spontaneity, the absence of prejudice and the acceptance of facts, that has so impacted us whether we're aware of it or not, that we believe it is an inalienable right that our needs be met. And we anticipate that it's the responsibility of everything and everyone around us to meet those needs. And if those expectations are not met, our response typically is, or else. If you don't meet my needs, I'll transfer somewhere else. If you don't meet my needs, I will shop at another place. If you don't meet my needs, you're getting a divorce, and I'm out the door. If you don't meet my needs, I can go to another school. I can be involved in another source of employment. You meet my needs or else. At one point, does your demand for needs being met and your threat of or else kick in? We've all been at that moment in time, and we've all grown accustomed to expecting that organizations and individuals around us will meet those needs. Whether we're sitting in a restaurant or whether we're engaged in purchasing something from a store or whether we're sitting in a pew, we have grown accustomed to expecting that those needs, as we perceive them, which I believe many of them are wants and not needs, need to be met by someone else, individuals and organizations, or else. And that or else begins to materialize in the expression of stress in our life, and that stress produces disappointment, and from that disappointment comes resentment, and then anger. I can see it happening so often between husbands and wives, where needs perceived or real are not met, and stress develops, which leads to disappointment and resentment and anger. It is a vicious cycle when we expect that someone or something other than ourselves will meet our real and perceived needs. And I believe that according to our text for today, there is only one who meets needs, only one who meets needs, whose name is above every other name, whose name is Jesus. It is Jesus. It's not this church. It's not these pastors. It's not uh, the workers at the restaurant. It's not your source of employment. It is Jesus who meets our needs. Only Jesus is holy and blameless. Only Jesus is pure and set apart. Only he is exalted above the heavens. Only Jesus has been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Only Jesus offers his life for ours. According to the Psalms, no man can redeem the life of another man. The ransom for that life is way too costly. The payment is never enough, the psalmist says, except the Lamb of God who laid down his life for each of us. Jesus offered his life once and for all for my sins, for your sins, for our sins, and for the sins of the world. I believe we need Jesus. We need to be in the presence of Jesus. We need his grace. We need his mercy. We need the power of his promises. We all need the Lord. Can I get an amen on that one? We need strength in our life. And strength manifests itself in a lot of different ways. There is physical strength. There is emotional 
Strength are not the same. There is mental strength and there is financial strength. There is moral strength, spiritual strength, and there is political strength. And we invest a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of resources, a lot of worry in the acquisition of these things in our life. Running to the gym or purchasing these lottery tickets or hoping that some politician who promises will secure it for us. So much a chasing after the wind. So Bartimaeus is asked of Jesus, what do you want? He says, Lord, I want to see. Was he expressing a need? Or want. We get confused and consumed by wants too often that we fail to realize that they aren't as valuable as we at the moment might think they are. And strength being one of them. And the acquisition of strength coming in ways that we often don't anticipate and few ever expect. I believe that we are by nature not strong people. To put it another way, I believe that we are, by design, weak. And in need of strength in our life, and I believe that only Jesus, who has been made perfect, as Scripture says, is forever my strength and your strength and our strength. I believe only Jesus has the things that are permanent and lasting. Uh, Martin Luther said, I have had many things in my hands. I've lost all of them. But whatever, whatever I placed in God's hands, he says, that I still possess. God offers us gifts. He offers you faith. Hope and the greatest of them is love. And you still have those. He etches his word on your heart. You still have it. He promises you so many things, all of which are yes for us in Jesus Christ, and none of those promises have been taken away from you. Not least of which is, I go to prepare a place for you. And I will come and take you by the hand, and you will be with me forever. An inheritance that doesn't rust and cannot be stolen or lost. I believe we'll never find anything of truly lasting value under a dollar laying out in the parking lot. As a result of some politician's election, or my efforts to go to the gym as frequently as I can. Not that will last. Not that will endure. And not that is forever. I believe only Jesus, only Jesus, is the permanent one through whom we must all be saved. We need Jesus. We need the Lord. And I believe, as Paul writes in Philippians, my God will meet all of my needs, not necessarily my wants, but he will meet all of my needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Not in Bethany Lutheran Church, not in Pastor Baker or Pastor Weisman, not in some organization outside the church, not as a result of your neighborhood or your friends or your spouse. I believe God will meet all of my needs according to his glorious riches in one name. And the name that is above every other name, and the name is Jesus. Jesus meets needs. Can I get an amen? Amen. And may the peace that passes all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in faith. Wait a minute. We're Lutheran, right? Why don't we end this the way a good Lutheran should end this message? This is most certainly true.
Amen. And the peace that passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. We continue our service this morning with the time of offering. An offering is a time where we recognize the needs that the Lord has given us, and we recognize the abundance that he's given us, and we give back to him. And there are many ways to give here at Bethany, and whichever way you give, whether it's online, whether it's texting in your gift to the Lord, or whether it's putting your gift, the physical gift and the offering plate outside the sanctuary doors, whatever way you give, we want to say thank you. Thank you for your gifts, because your gifts allow the gospel to be spread to the Kansas City area, to the whole world, which badly needs Jesus. During our offering song, we're going to sing with the band, and as we sing, I invite you to reflect upon the many blessings that God has given you.
God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Join our hearts. Father, you are greater, you are stronger, you are a great giver, and you have freely given us life, given us forgiveness, given us your grace and your mercy. You provide for all of our spiritual needs, but also our earthly needs as well. And you don't give out of scarcity, Lord, but you give out of abundance for us. We pray that you receive our tithes and our offerings as we give back to you today. Use these gifts for the benefit of your gospel so that your name may be proclaimed by all. Dear Heavenly Father, you shine in the darkness and you call us out of ashes to rise with you. You have freely welcomed us into a community, into a family here at Bethany centered around you. And one of the ways that this happens is through the precious gift of baptism. And today we celebrate and rejoice with Joe, Daniel, Dorsey, David, Hudson, Callie, and Lorna. And all of those who are remembering the day where you have adopted them into your family. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon them that they may continue to grow in their faith Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the many ministries that take place here at Bethany Lutheran Church and School. And right now, we lift up the different individuals and different families that have decided to call Bethany their new church home. We pray that they'll continue to learn and grow in you and that they will find areas to use their talents, their skills, and their passions for your gospel to be proclaimed here at Bethany. Dear Heavenly Father, you tell us in your scripture to train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he's old, he'll not depart from it. Heavenly Father, we give thanks today for the children who have received their Bibles this weekend, which marks a milestone in their faith walk with you. Continue to equip their parents and continue to equip and empower us as a church to point and direct their lives to you. That they may continue to learn about the great love that you have for them. Heavenly Father, you also equip us and call us into mission. But while we're in mission for you, we may face difficulty, we may face struggle that comes from the world. And we pray that you pour out your peace and your comfort upon the missionaries in Haiti who are kidnapped and their families. Allow them to cling to the promise that you have given us, the promise that you will be with us to the very end of the age, the promise that you will never leave us. And we ask, dear Lord, that if it is your will, that you return those missionaries home safely to their families. Lord, you also are a great healer. especially lift up Kathy, Ruth, Bubba, Marie, and Bill. We ask that you work through the doctors and nurses working with them, and I pray that you will heal them according to your good and gracious will. God of all grace and God of all comfort, we ask that you give your grace and comfort to the families of joy, Reverend Brian, Heather, as you have called them to be home with you. Allow the families to cling to the promise that you have given us, the promise of eternal life, as you have defeated death once and for all for us, and when you rose from that tomb. Lord, pour out your peace upon these families, the peace that passes all understanding in this difficult time. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask all of this 
in your son's holy and precious name. And we now join together to pray the prayer your son, our Savior, has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please rise as we hear our Lord's blessing to you from Numbers chapter 6. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. We fall down, we lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus. The greatness of his mercy and love at the feet. See you guys remember one service next week for Reformation Sunday.